Are you a diehard Minnesota Vikings fan and you want to beat those dirty New York Giants in Wild Card Weekend? Who go down there, hit that subscribe button. I am fired up. I want to see kind of the fan base. I want to catch the pulse of the Vikings fans right now. Go down, hit that subscribe button if you want the Vikings to beat the Giants. And let's get into today's video. Welcome to the Vikings Now. I am your host, Patrick Seatman. On today's show, we're going to be touching over a little rumor about the Vikings potentially drafting a wide receiver in this year's upcoming draft with Thielen kind of taking a step back this year. We also have some huge Vikings injury news going into this huge game against the New York Giants. Obviously, we got injury news on both sides, and we'll also be touching about how the Vikings will replace Brian O'Neill. Let's start with the Vikings drafting a wide receiver. So Todd McShay, he covers the draft better than anybody. He had the Vikings drafting Zay Flowers, the wide receiver from Boston College, in one of his first mock drafts. And honestly, with Thielen losing a step, this kind of makes sense for the Vikings to look for a wide receiver in round one. His 2022 stats, he had 78 receptions, just over 1,000 yards, and 12 touchdowns. And the thing is with Zay Flowers, he's a phenomenal route runner. And if we're looking at some of these other wide receiver draft targets, if you could pair any of these guys with Justin Jefferson, with K.J. Osborne, both of those guys going to be entering their fourth year next upcoming season, if you could pair any of these guys with them, I would be totally ecstatic, especially Quentin Johnson and Jordan Addison and Jackson Smith and the Jigba. Those are the three guys that I kind of got my name or kind of got my eyes on heading into this year's draft. But the Vikings overall receiving leaders this year, obviously Jefferson, he had a historic season with just over 1,800 yards, over 125 catches. But Adam Thielen, Adam Thielen, he's still, the production is still there with the 70 catches, 716 yards, and six touchdowns. K.J. Osborne only giving you 60 catches for 650 yards. I think K.J. Osborne, I think he's going to be slated to be the number two wide receiver in this upcoming Viking season. I think Thielen will either have to restructure or just kind of hop in to that wide receiver three role. And then T.J. Hawkinson, obviously he plays tight end, but he's had a great year with just over 900 yards. Now I do want to ask you guys this. Would you draft a wide receiver in the first round? Type Y for yes, type N for no. I am leaning towards yes. This was something, if you asked me this before the year, I'd kind of say like, hell no. Why would the Vikings need to draft a wide receiver in round one of this year's upcoming NFL draft? But I'm leaning towards typing my Y for yes. Get down in the comments and let me know. Type Y for yes, N for no. Now, we got some Vikings-Giants injury updates because especially on the Vikings side, they got a couple key ones that we're going to dive into right now. And we can start off with the running back, the man, Dalvin Cook. Dalvin Cook, you know, it's been a little funny debate amongst Vikings fans. Like, Dalvin Cook, Alexander Madison, should Ty Chandler be getting more touches? Dalvin Cook against the Bears, he did leave that game with a knee injury, but he talked about it briefly, and he said he should be ready to go. But he will probably show up on the injury report this week that we have not gotten yet because we're recording this on Tuesday. But expect Dalvin Cook to be on the injury report. I don't think it would be a big deal. He left the game briefly. He did come back, and then Madison ended up getting most of the carries. Shannon Sullivan, the Vikings slot corner, he left that uh, game against the Bears with a knee injury as well. Shannon Sullivan, he's in an up and down year with the Vikings, but he is our slot corner. We're going to need him ready to go against the New York Giants. And here's what he had to say about playing in Chicago on that terrible field that they got up there. He says, it's cold. The ground doesn't let up on anybody. I'll be ready to go this Sunday. I'm ready to compete. Just bang my knee on the ground. So it sounded like Shannon Sullivan, he'll be ready to go. Just maybe a little knee bruise. Just something that it's going to be interesting to monitor for him. But expect Shannon Sullivan to be ready to go this Sunday versus the Giants. Next, Blake Brandell. This is probably the most shocking injury update that we've gotten this year. So he tore his MCL just over a month ago. And Chris Tomlinson, Vikings beat reporter, he broke this. He said Kevin O'Connell said that they will open Blake Brandell's window this week to return for IR. So giving him a 21-day window to activate him to the active roster. I, we'll, we'll kind of touch about this later when we talk about Brian O'Neill, but this will be very interesting to see if the Vikings go with Blake, Blake Brandell coming off a torn MCL or Ole Uda. Now the man of the hour also, Garrett Bradbury. It was funny. Going into this year, I never thought I would be saying the Vikings need Garrett Bradbury back. 
Who would have thought that? The Vikings needing Garrett Bradbury back, but he hurt his back in a minor car accident back in December. And, you know, offensive lineman, if you're dealing with a back injury, that has to be brutal. I mean, that has to be one of the worst injuries that an offensive lineman could get. But he did speak last Thursday, and he said he is feeling better. He's trending in the right direction. And then yesterday, a couple reports did come out that he should be expected to be at practice this week. I'm expecting this to be a game-time decision. I'm really hoping he's ready to go because I don't want to see Chris Reed going against Dexter Lawrence in the Vikings-Giants wildcard weekend showdown. Now, one guy from the um, New York Giants that I do want to touch on is Adoree Jackson. Adoree Jackson, he had a sprained MCL, and he's been out the last couple of games for the New York Giants. He There's kind of been some mixed reports. We'll start off with Dan Duggan here. He's a beat reporter. He does a great job for the New York Giants. He said, you think so based on how long it's been since injury and that he's been limited the past two weeks. But his comments last night didn't inspire a ton of confidence. He wouldn't say if he felt physically ready. Said he's taking it day by day and leaving up to the trainers. So kind of a little day by day from Dan Duggan. But then Jordan Renan said this. And he actually said that Brian Dable says, Adoree Jackson, Leonard Williams, and Aziz Ulari will do something on Wednesday at or at practice on Wednesday how much we will see but it all seems like they're trending in the right direction so Dan Duggan is saying probably not Jordan Renan is saying probably but this is going to be a huge game time decision I think this will have an immense impact on how this game goes I think if he's able to go I think it would just be even more challenging for the Vikings to get the ball to the catalyst Justin Jefferson but he if he isn't able to go this would be huge, and I think Jefferson would be sitting on another huge game. But I want you guys to get down in the comments and predict Justin Jefferson's stats versus the New York Giants this weekend. I'm putting, I'm putting him on a big game. I think even if Adoree plays, I think Jefferson will pass that 100-yard mark. I think if you saw what Sean McVay was able to do for Cooper Cup in last year's playoffs, obviously teams are going to try to scheme to take away Justin Jefferson or a Cooper Cup. But Kevin O'Connell and Sean McVay, they do a great job of getting their best player the ball, putting him in different positions, whether it's a slot out wide or at the wide spot. I think Jefferson is sitting on a big game. I'm going to put him at nine receptions, 127 yards, and a touchdown. But if you want to bet on the Vikings game this weekend against the Giants, Vikes are coming in at a three-point favorite right now. You can go to BetUS and use promo code CHAT125, and they'll give you a 125% deposit bonus. So if you go to chatsports.com slash bet and use that promo code right there, CHAT125, you'll get a 125 deposit bonus. Put 100 in, you'll get 125 free to play with. I got to put it all on Vikings Moneyline this weekend. But go to chatsports.com slash bet. Now let's talk about who will start at right tackle? I think it's most likely going to be Ole Uda just because he's gotten the reps the past couple of weeks. But it's going to be interesting because, like I mentioned at the top of the show, that Blake Brandell is being activated off IR, and he has a chance to be activated to the active roster this weekend. But if we're kind of talking about Brian O'Neill, man. I mean, Brian O'Neill this season, he has been fantastic. And he is the kind of – the perfect word to describe him would just be consistency. Over 1,000 snaps, an 83.1 overall PFF grade, 83.3 run block grade, 77.9 pass blocking grade, 24 pressures allowed on the whole season, goes down to about 1.6 per game, and he had zero games where he had a grade lower than 63. Brian O'Neill, you're losing him. This is going to be a problem. He was that right tackle. He wasn't on Kirk's blind side, but with him and Christian Darisaw, it, was just, it just made me feel a lot more confident heading into this weekend against the Giants. Without him, not so much. But I think Ole Uda, So this is Ole Uda's past two-week stats. He's been better than I expected. And honestly, shout-out to Ole Uda, our six-rounder out of Elon. He's been way better than I could have ever imagined. His overall grade the past two weeks, a 69.5 rating. His run block grade was at a 65.8. But this pass block grade right here, this, is, this, this leaves me really optimistic. At a 76.9, with only two pressures allowed, going against, honestly, a Packers team that has a great front seven, and they know how to get to the quarterback, and they did get to the quarterback, but just not on Ole Uda's right side. A big concern I also have with this team is running the football on the right side of the offensive line, even if it's Bradbury at center, but Ed Ingram, Ole Uda, it's going to be tough, especially at the Giants. They got an elite defensive front. But I want you guys to get down in the comments again and answer this. How concerned are you with this Vikings offensive line? Scale it 1 through 10. Before the Brian O'Neill injury, it sounded like I had confidence in this offensive line group to go for sure get it done. But I was sitting at like a 3 or 2. I didn't really think it was a big concern for this group. But losing Brian O'Neill, 
I'm probably sitting at around an 8 or a 9 right now, especially considering our opponent being that New York Giants defensive front. But get down in the comments. Let me know. How concerned are you with the Vikes offensive line? I'll see you guys next time. Skull Vikes.